Hey, Chris Lipe here. I know I'm making some generalizations here, but there really are two different camps when it comes to singing and aggressive singing. There are an awful lot of people who say they can't sing, but they can scream. And there's an awful lot of people who say they can't scream, but they can sure sing. Why is this? Why is it hard to cross over? Why is it hard to do both? Why is it so difficult to be one of those singers who can live in the middle and be healthily aggressive and uh, really articulate with their voice and confident and... Oh, tell me why! Well, in this video, if you're in one of those two camps or maybe partially in one of those camps where you're comfortable with one and not so comfortable with the other, I hope that I can help bring these worlds together for you. Help you feel different things with your voice so that you can sing more aggressively, scream, or maybe just learn how to articulate with your voice a little bit better. For fun, we're gonna use part of Nirvana's Rape Me, the end of it, and we're gonna take it in a little different direction than Kurt Cobain did, but we're gonna use that as an idea and as a starting point to help us merge these two worlds a little bit. If you'd like more help with your own voice and you'd like my help, click the link below and join my free vocal course. That's the perfect place to start for you and I working together with your own singing. When we are working on screaming or when we're working on false chord engagement, being really aggressive and not so notish <laughs> with our voice, we are engaging, ideally, a completely different part of our vocal anatomy. The upper throat, the false chord area, it's called a lot of things. There's cartilages at work in there as well, but really it's a separate and together part of the throat that when thought of as together and exercised together with your primary chords messes you up. This is why so many people who try to sing aggressively and already sing mess up their voices. This is also why a lot of people who scream really well, they've figured out this coordination of the above throat, not so engaged or not engaged at all primary chords. They have figured that out, but haven't figured out how to also engage their chords at the same time. And screamers, if you're wanting to explore your singing voice in a more experiential way, it's difficult for you because you haven't worked on clean, articulate, well-supported phonation with your primary chords. You're so used to bottling up, moderating, and pushing air that you oftentimes will use way too much air or, sounds weird, way too little air when you're going to actually sing. So your airflow moderation meter and, and uh, baseline is really screwed up. So if you focus on well-supported, dynamic, free, clean singing, and then bring back in what you know about screaming, about the false chord engagement that you figured out, this is how to do it. If I'm doing this, which is this really loud sort of sloppy whisper, I am not engaging my primary chords. Primary chord engagement would be ah, 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 right? I'm not even singing. I'm just making noise. And when I'm talking, I'm making noise. Ah, so if I go back and forth from this upper throat as high as I can possibly make it, like right behind the soft palate, I am working on airflow. Here is the main difference between these two camps. While airflow is important with singing, don't get me wrong, screaming and false chord engagement is almost all moder learning to moderate airflow with the areas that don't include your primary chords. When it comes to singing, singing is a different way to moderate airflow, although it shares some of the things from the screaming camp, but they feel very different and they're, they're very competitive with each other if you're, if you're not looking at things and feeling things correctly. 
So make this observation. Do this weird uh, sound. Uh, uh, you're holding your breath. Uh, you're pushing. Uh, and you're trying to get some sort of sound that doesn't include a note that is as high as possible in your throat. Uh, okay. And then rock back and forth between this and this. And make an observation about where you feel things resonating, vibrating. Uh, if it doesn't raise a ton, you are, you are not placing this correctly. You also might be uh, tensing your neck too much and causing the sensation of phonating to go high. So when we tense, uh, it raises up. When we uh, uh, don't focus our mind on being high enough with this engagement, the false chord area, upper throat engagement, we are not separating it enough from our primary chords. Now let's go to pure singing here for a minute. Yeah, yeah. We are focusing on pitch. We're focusing on placement, resonance, all these things that come into a little bit more uh, scrutiny than they do by just doing something like this. <laughs> but what happens if I take yeah and uh, and put them together? Well, first, let's go to the extremes with both. Okay, I'm going to be very clean over here singing yeah, and I'm going to take false chord engagement to a you know an extreme as well. It's high, high in the throat. Even when I'm not doing it very loud, I can move a lot of air, and I can be really intense because I'm I'm engaging high. Here on the other side, yeah, I am keeping things tension free. Let's combine the two worlds. There it is. I feel a distinct difference between here and here. If they're coming together, that's when you start to get the tickly, scratchy, throaty thing. Yeah. Now, if I combine that with my run, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Now we're trying to focus on hitting a fairly high pitch and uh, hold back air with the area bar. This creates a train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> if we if we think about them uh, in in the ways that I just described, right? It's how can we possibly do this? Here's how. Take your high note. Yeah. Hit it cleanly. Yeah. Don't worry about the run so much. And then focus on on with the positioning that you used to get that note. Yeah. Add stuff on top of it, just like we did earlier. Uh, we can't take the same feel of this note. Uh, and add the false chord engagement on top of it as we do with this one. Yeah! We can't do it. It's a different feel. So we have to get this note clean first. So I say on all my YouTube videos, get clean first. Yeah! Now, focus on this same idea. Push more. Close. Picture yourself closing up your throat on the top. Yeah! 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 It's going to go in and out as you're dialing it in. But the difference is, I didn't go here and try to push up to it. I got the clean feel first and added it over the top. This is how you bring the two worlds together. Always start clean. And you have to relearn the sensation and relearn the separation in different parts of your range. So now let's go to rape me and we're going to take that line and we're going to practice this idea because it's it's fairly rangy. Rape me. Rape. That's high. 
I'm going to do it clean first. Rape me! Rape me! Yeah. Rape me! I'm going to get it as clean as I can, and I'm going to get the pitch as good as I can. And then I'm going to focus on adding things over the top. Okay? I'm going to do it very slowly. Let's get the feel of that note. Okay, I'm holding back air, practicing with that note. I might have to sound pretty ridiculous for a minute to get those positioning. The main thing is I'm trying to separate the sensation of closing off air from phonation. There it is. Rape! Rape! Rape me! And I'm doing the same thing there dynamically, but let's take those on the notes. Rape me! 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 If you're, if you're afraid to sound ugly while you're making these distinctions, you're never going to get there. La! Let things go in and out a little bit. Now, I'm going to try to do it in rhythm. I realize I'm doing this very fast, but my muscle memory has been dialed in from years of practicing this sort of thing. This is how we want to think about it, though. Clean first, get the feel, and then hold back air. Gradually let air through. Like that. Over all different ports, parts of your range. Rape me! Rape me! Rape! Rape me! Slowing it down is often very helpful for this sort of thing. Rape me! Rape me! Rape me! Rape me! Rape me! Now, let's practice going back and forth a little bit. Adding that over the notes. Yeah! Without sticking to an actual line. Yeah! Yeah! Take it slower. You can hear the that happening and uh, when I engage my primary chords it creates this nice full sound different different difference and you can also see me pushing more but even though I'm I'm expending a lot of energy that air is being held back above my larynx which is why I can still talk afterward I'm not placing all that not all that airflow is being blown past my it's not like I'm doing this <sighs> That would dry out my chords. I'm stopping the air somewhat with my false chord engagement. Yeah! Yeah! Rape me! Rape me! Rape me! I realize that this is a very fast perspective-based thing on joining those two worlds. Clean singing, super gritty singing, screaming, but this is where it starts. And if you don't get this, if you don't understand the separation or able to apply that in different parts of your range, you'll never be able to join the two worlds. Again, if you'd like more help with your own voice and you'd like me to come alongside you to do that, click the link below and join my free course. We'll see you for more.